Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? The weekend is here. We can all mong out and watch boxing and sit on the sofa, trying to look fascinating. Anyway, the weekend started boxing-wise with a good fight in America between Jose Ramirez and Jose Pastrada. Um, this was a fight that was sort of absorbing to watch, but never really caught fire. It wasn't what you call an action fight, but it was. there was plenty to admire there because both these guys are very skillful. Um, you may know Ramirez, of course, from uh, his previous fight. He lost both his uh, titles to Josh Taylor. Uh, he had two of the two of the uh, super lightweight uh, titles. He lost to the Taylor, got floored twice. Prior to that, he'd beaten Victor Postel on a unanimous decision. It was a majority decision, I think. Um, and then prior to that, he'd beaten Morris Hooker in six rounds, stopped him. I think Hooker had a, a damaged arm and effectively quit. Um, before that, he faced Jose Zapeda, who was a common opponent, because Zapeda fought uh, uh, Pedraza as well and beat Pedraza um, on points. Pedraza has also fought Tank Davis. He got stopped in seven rounds. I think that was about, about five years ago. Um... But not a bad fighter, two two weight world champ or two weight belt holder anyway. Um, Pedraza is uh, super lightweight. No, excuse me, uh, super featherweight uh, IBF super featherweight champ. I think he beat Edna Cherry. That was about seven years ago, and then he was a lightweight champion. And I'm struggling to remember who he beat. I think it was Ray Beltran, and then he lost to, lost to Lomachenko. Uh, on point. So he went the distance with Lomachenko. So both these guys are real fighters. They're not, you know, mugs. Um, the styles are very different. Ramirez's style, very much a front foot fighter. His natural style is that he tends to hang his head quite low in his stance or, or quite forward. So he has a tendency at times, not always, but a fair bit of the time to lean over the front foot a bit, just because his head always seems to be positioned, hunched forward. And that's how Josh Taylor got him in their fight because he um, he knocked him down with an uppercut when I think in the corner in you know, one of the corners, and that was because Ramirez was on the front foot and Taylor timed him. Well, there were no knockdowns in this fight, um, but Ramirez style come forward, throw lots of punches, very proactive. Pedraza more reactive. Pedraza is a guy who doesn't run, but he likes to be on the on the edge of the distance, the periphery. Looking to counter punch, Southpaw, Pedraza is. And all of these rounds, not all of them, but a lot of these rounds were very, very similar, with Pedraza looking for the counters, very rarely stepping forward and being the proactive fighter, looking to counter. He likes to time time his opponents, he likes to find his own rhythm, Pedraza. Ramirez wasn't taking the bait. Ramirez was, you know, controlled. Yes, it was you know, he channeling that aggression correctly, not he wasn't hot-headed and was throwing more punches. And that's really the story of this fight for me because um, I just think that Ramirez did far more work than Pedraza. Pedraza was too conservative, a little bit too reticent, was throwing punches and, you know, was using his feet very intelligently, but he wasn't getting the opportunities to counter-punch um, and to be the reactor as much as he wanted to. And as a result, the rounds were slipping away. He didn't have that extra gear to go into. He, you know, a fighter, the an obvious choice is Mayweather, who, if he's on the back foot and it's not working out, he had those gears to go through to step forward and fire punches. That variety with Pedraza wasn't really there, which is probably what stops him from being an elite fighter. Ramirez, on the other hand, um, just busier, threw some good body punches. Both these guys are intelligent fighters. They've got quite high ring IQs. In terms of talent, I suppose, again, it, there isn't really much in it, but I don't think either of these guys is what you call an A-plus fighter. They're more like A-minus guys, um, but very, very good, very good fighters. Um, the three judges had it 112, uh, 116, 116, 112 to Ramirez. I agreed with that decision. I thought those were very, very good good cards. Uh, in this, For one thing, with, with Pedraza, He's, he should realise, he's from Puerto Rico, he should realise, you go to America, you've got to be aggressive, you've got to be uh, a front foot fighter, at least some of the time, and mix things up, otherwise, you know, you ain't going to win anything, because the Americans like the aggression, and Ramirez was certainly aggressive. So, I think that uh, this was a, 
an absorbing, intriguing fight. Not really a, a thrill fest by any means, but a deserved win for Ramirez. A shout out also to the referee, Jack Rees, who is an excellent referee. Really, really excellent. Uh, no referee will go their entire career without making mistakes, but Jack Rees makes very, very few of them. He handled this fight, which was a technical, very technical fight. He handled it very, very well. You could say, well, he didn't have a lot to do. There was no mauling, there was no... But Jack Rees, is, he handles big occasions well. He handles the uh, variety of styles. He lets the fighters fight. I just think he's a very, very good referee. Um, and the judges were good as well, which is nice to say after a week ago and that complete farce in, in Scotland. So well, did you see the fight? What did you think of it? Let me know your opinions. Um, we've got Chocolatito uh, Martinez coming up tonight. So this was a nice little way to start the weekend. Enjoy yourselves. I'll catch you again sometime. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It only it takes a second. Hit subscribe. Hit like. Go on. You know you want to do it. Speak later. Take care. Bye bye for now.